Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I want to continue on the RTS and how to make a move. So, um, the way that I make the move in the RTS that I'm using is that I'm using uh, the navigation, which is in Unity Pro only. However, there are plenty of A-Star uh, navigation for Unity Basic. They're roughly like $15 or so, so they're pretty cheap to uh, get a navigation. So uh, since no, I don't assume that you have navigation, I don't want you to go out and buy something just for this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to move them, and I'm also going to show you how to assign them. For those of you who do have Unity Pro, how to assign their destination inside of um, the the uh, nav mesh. So uh, we start off by having to uh, write some code, obviously. Um, I do want to point out that these guys do have rigid bodies and their rotation is frozen on the X, Y, and Z that's important. Uh, otherwise you'll see them like fall over whenever they get to their destination or they're going too fast and they start spinning in midair. Some weird stuff. So make sure you add a rigid body, check off those to get them frozen, and uh, then we're ready to start on our coding. So um, I'm going to start off here in the camera operator and in the camera operator we have a few things to add uh, for our uh, clicking so um, I guess I'll I'll just kind of uh, knock it out from top to bottom and then explain a little bit later so the first thing that we need to do is that we need to add a using statement we're going to be using system dot collections uh, not configuration system dot uh, collections dot generic because we're going to use be using some lists and we're going to add in a couple uh, static uh, things so let's do a a private static vector 3 um, and this is going to be the move to destination uh, D E S T I N A there we go whatever equals vector 3.0 so the move to destination will be 0 and then we're gonna have a private static uh, list of strings which are going to be passable um, new list and for now we're just gonna be using floor uh, this is just kind of when we click what are we expecting to kind of click on so when we uh, click to move there's going to be a raycast that flies through a bunch of stuff and when it finds this destination that's when it knows hey this is where I need to be going okay. and uh, I will explain that when we do the raycast so in the update let's add in a function called clean up just like that and let's go down to the very bottom of our code and do our cleanup function which is just private void cleanup and inside of that we're going to be adding um, if not input dot uh, get mouse up oh, get mouse button up and we're looking for the uh, right click this time because that's how we're going to be moving the move to destination will equal vector 3.0 so that's just cleaning up. We are going to be using vector 3.0 as our null. So anytime vector th that move to or the destination is vector 3.0, we're saying that it's uh, non-existent. It's not clicked. We're done clicking. This is not a destination to move to. So um, now we're going to add a uh, static get de destination. Um, so it's going to be public because the unit class will be accessing it and it's going to return a vector 3 which is obviously the destination so we do get destination instead of here we say if move to destination is equal to vector 3.0 because we only want to do this calculation once we only want to calculate if uh, we're at our null value which I said was vector 3.0 um, I don't know if you could see this I can bump it up one more um, so uh, where was it? All right. So now we're gonna do a raycast hit, hit, and we're gonna do a ray r is equal to camera dot main camera, which is in the case in this case it is this one, but that's okay. We could we're just gonna do the main camera just in case we have multiple cameras. Um, screen two point ray, 
input dot mouse position. There we go. And now we say if the physics dot raycast, uh, we pass in the R, we out the hit. So if it hits something, then we need to go through this calculation. And we need to say while not passables dot contains uh, hit dot transform dot game object dot name. Uh, then we need to say if not physics dot raycast uh, hit dot oh no not wheel hit hit dot no oh my goodness okay raycast hit dot there we go transform position uh, r dot dot direction I'm missing a bracket up here that's why it's giving me trouble uh, r dot direction and out hit so if not break this loop so what is this doing it is checking if the move to destination is at our null value if so then it's going to say uh, raycast hit um, is going uh, uh, sorry and then we're going to cast a ray from the input mouse from the main camera so we're casting it into the game checking if it hits anything and if it does we're going to check if that uh, name of that hit, that hit object, is equivalent to what's inside of our passables, which is floor. And if it's not, then we're going to do another raycast from that position of the object that it hit and continuing down the direction that was our original direction until it hits again. And if that object is listed then it uh, breaks out of this loop and if it hits nothing if we wind up going through the floor and off into infinite space then we're just gonna break because we hit absolutely nothing uh, it didn't work out alright and then outside of this if we're gonna say uh, move to destination is equal to hit that point now we uh, only want to do this if um, let me check here. Do, do, do. If we cast it, we actually want to do this inside of our first if statement. That way, we don't set it to some other value that doesn't exist because we didn't hit anything. Uh, then again, if we miss here, we didn't hit anything either. So I guess we can uh, leave it outside, and I presume that we can do if hit dot transform is not equal to null here. Then we can assign it. I wonder if that's going to compile. Let me check. No, something's wrong. Expression or type value. Uh, vector three dot zero. I missed dot zero up there. <clears throat> and guess destination is not all code paths. Okay, so I guess we can do this. Okay, so now we can go ahead and return our move to destination. So we can do return move to destination. <clears throat> which if nothing is hit and we don't hit our correct uh, floor then it's going to return vector 3.0 which is our empty value of hey this is nothing so with that we are done with our camera class and we can jump over to our unit class inside our unit class we need quite a few new public uh, well not quite a few we need about three uh, new variables so we need a private vector 3 move to dest for the move to destination equals to vector 3.0 uh, private bool assigned floor uh, offset um, actually we don't need this so let's not do assigned floor offset that's for something else let's do a private float uh, floor offset let's just set that equal to 1 and uh, we can actually make this a public so that we can change it in the editor if needed that wasn't quite a few was it <laughs> it was only like two so anyways inside of our update I'm gonna take this if selected render where we change the color and put it up inside of here because uh, I don't need it outside of that really and outside of that we're going to add a new if statement 
we're going to say if selected um, and input dot get mouse button up one so if we right click we want to make a vector three destination it's equal to camera operator dot get destination if destination is not equal to vector three dot zero then uh, right here by the way if you have unity pro and you're using nav meshes you can say game object dot get component nav oops nav mesh agent dot set destination destination and you would actually be done right here but since uh, I'm assuming most people do not have Unity Pro and don't have nav mesh set up, we're going to continue on doing it, uh, moving them in a linear path ourselves. So move to destination will equal to destination, and move to destination dot y plus equals floor offset. Uh, now we're going to add a new function called update move. Remember, if you have Unity Pro and you're using NavMesh Agent, you are done here. You don't need to continue and do any more of the code inside of the unit class that I am doing currently. Uh, so, we're going to continue down and say uh, private void update move. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and now we're going to update our move. It's going to if move to dest move to destination is not equal to vector 3.0 and transform dot position is not equal to move to destination inside of that we're going to say vector 3 we're going to initialize a vector 3 and call it direction this is the direction we're going to move the player is going to be equal to move to destination subtracted by the transform dot position normalized because we're doing a uh, just a directional vector um, and then we need to set our offset for our direction dot y uh, direction dot y is actually going to be zero because we don't want to move the uh, on the y axis at all we just want to move the rig the rigid body in a x and y plane or x and z plane so uh, we can go ahead and do transform dot rigid body no not right transform rigid body dot velocity is equal to direction multiplied by speed I just realized I didn't make a speed variable we can do that by saying public float speed and let's make that equal to like 5 or 10 or something um, so uh, we multiply by the speed and then if the vector 3 dot distance um, transform position no not that transform transform dot position so the current position of this object and the move to destination so if that is less than our stop this is another variable we don't have um, what did I do here oh I forgot my equal sign uh, we we need a public float stop uh, distance offset so if we don't have a stop distance offset then our our unit is going to be he's gonna reach the destination past the destination and then say hey I'm past it I need to go back and we'll wind up going back and forth infinitely so if we set a simple offset to check the distance against uh, then we can easily um, set it to a range uh, so if we do our move to destination uh, is now equal to vector 3.0 so we return it back to nothing I wonder if I could just use null there instead but uh, it's too late now uh, else transform dot rigid body dot velocity is equal to vector 3 dot 0 I am curious about that because sometimes a person may click and it may go at vector 3 dot 0 almost impossible uh, because of unless you're doing some mathematics on your click but uh, may cause issues so I will check into that um, 
anyways, ignore all that. We are done with our uh, unit selecting and move class. So now we can jump back. I, I'm not sure how long this is video, video has been, but I'm going to try and wrap it up. Now we can jump back, check our units. They have a few new variables. The floor offset is one. I know this because um, I'm not even sure if we use floor offset in this one, actually. Did we? Yeah, we did. Okay, so the... Um, Floor offset I know is one because these capsules here are two units high. So if I put it at zero, you can see he's halfway through. If I put it at 0 0.5, you can see he's still not all the way through the plane. But if I put him at one, uh, he's on top of the plane. So I know he's two units tall, so that's why I put one here. It's half his height. I guess I could have calculated that and just said half of the unit's height. Uh, that would have made more sense to calculate the mesh's height and do half of that. But anyways, I just put one there. Uh, the speed I put is 5, and the stop distance offset will be 0 0.5. So if I hit play, select this guy, and right click, you can see he moves to wherever I click. Now watch, if I, if I change this to, say, 2 over here, the stop distance offset, and right click, he's going to stop much further away from my, my mouse's actual clicking point when I click. Um, and but if I put zero and I click you're gonna see he's gonna do that infinite shaking I was talking about so that's what it would be like if we didn't have this so if I put 0 0.5 you can see now he moves to a pretty pretty accurate spacing now I can select them all and click and have them all kind of fight for that position but they'll reach it and make some kind of weird formation now if I change this to something like th uh, three uh, and let me move these guys out a little bit. Um, also, I should probably make a video on uh, actually selecting them without having to highlight, where I can just click to select. Because right now I have to highlight the select. Um, I wonder if I can do that in this video. Let me check how long this video is. This video is 17 minutes. I am not going to do it in this video. Anyways, so if I were to put that to 3, select them all, click, you're going to see that they all stop at a further distance and still kind of fight over it. But uh, that's it for getting them to move. with just This is just linear. They won't move around things. You should get an A-star algorithm, uh, some kind of pathfinding off the asset store if you don't have one already or if you don't want to write one. Uh, it takes a while. I've written some A star for 2D at least, not 3D. I translated it into 3D once, but it was only using X and Z, so basically it was 2Z because I wasn't using Y. But um, anyways, you might, might want to get an A star algorithm off of the asset store if you don't have Unity Pro. If you have Unity Pro, use Nav Mesh. I may go over how to do that later. So uh, with that, I'm done. I'm sorry for this 18-minute video, and um, have a good day.